All right, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing a third periodic trend. That's going to be the trend in ionization energy. And before we go any further, it's necessary to define what do I mean when I say ionization energy. This is going to be the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in the gaseous state. So in gaseous state. Okay. <clears throat> and, you know, the way that this looks is let's say we have sodium and we have it in its gaseous state. We'll talk about this little G that I have in parentheses in terms of when we represent uh, elements and their phase of matter. But suffice to say, we'll get to that when we get to that, but we're going to be looking at making that sodium into a positively charged cation. And what we're doing is we're removing an electron from the sodium. So we're putting in energy in order to have that electron ejected. That energy is going to be similar to the energy levels we talked about for our Bohr model. And in the case of sodium, we say that the change in energy here, as we go from left to right, which another way to term this is going to be the ionization energy to remove this first electron is going to be 496 kilojoules per mole of electrons removed. And so, you know, what this term means right here is this is for the removal of one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms. And so the reason that we see a positive value for this ionization energy is because it always is going to require energy to remove that electron. And another way to say this is like these types of reactions, which we'll get into, types of reactions that require energy, we're going to say that they are endothermic. Just reactions that require energy to be input in order for them to proceed. And so off to the right, I have a chart that is showing you the ionization energy for um, a big group of our elements. And what you can see is that when we look at the bottom, we see this trend that ionization ener energy increases as we go from left to right, with a few exceptions. So it increases as we go across a row. And one of the main reasons for this is that we know that as we go from left to right across the periodic table, you have a higher ZEF. So you have that higher effective nuclear charge. And as you do that, we talked about that making the size of a element or an atom smaller as you go left to right. But we can also think about it, you know, strictly the reason for that, for that difference in size was that the protons, the positively charged nucleus, pull on the electrons more and more as you have higher ZEFF. And so in addition to making the atom smaller, it also makes it harder to remove that electron because that given valence electron goes from feeling, you know, a plus one effective nuclear charge to feeling, you know, all the way up to a plus 10 effective nuclear charge. So you can imagine if it's feeling a lot of positive pull, it's going to take a little bit longer to remove that atom. Right here on this side right here, we're saying that we have a decrease in ionization energy as we go down a column. So we're going to say it decreases. And the reason for this is it kind of boils down to the size of the atom that you're pulling it from. We know that as we go down a column, we have a larger principal quantum number. Or, you know, another way to say this is that you just have this larger n value for valence electrons. And what that really just means is that, you know, your valence electrons are in a larger orbital. So you have this larger orbital that contains your electrons. And as you have that larger orbital, what that's going to mean is that it's just going, your, your electrons in those large orbitals are going to be less tightly held. So less tightly held um, electrons. I think I, I forgot an R there. Electrons 
with same ZEFF. Because we know that as we go down a column, our effective nuclear charge stays the same. And so, you know, I'll just say here, so ZEFF is same down the column. So there's no change in the charge felt by your valence electrons, but we know that N increases. And knowing that the attractive force between the electrons and the protons has a dependence on the distance between them, so it's not equal to, but it's you know proportional to the distance squared. If it's proportional to the distance, the further your valence electron gets from that positive charge, the easier it is to rip it away. So, you know, larger orbital equals more separation between your nucleus and your valence electron, which just means smaller force, which ultimately means less energy to remove that electron, less energy to remove electron. So that's our trend in ionization energy. It increases from left to right, and it decreases going down the column for similar reasons as we saw changes in our atomic radius. What's really awesome or interesting about ionization energy is that it's not constrained to just the first electron you remove. You can also remove more electrons from your now ions that you form. And the magnitude of these subsequent ionizations depends on your proximity to the noble gas configuration as you lose more and more electrons. And so let's look at the example of sodium and magnesium. These are elements number 11, sorry, 11, and element number 12. So we write up their noble gas configuration for the electron configuration. Sodium is neon 3s1. Magnesium is neon 3s2. And let's remove one electron. So we're going to look at the first ionization, that first loss of an electron. After we lose the first electron, the configuration for sodium is now neon, or equivalently 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Same for th thing for magnesium. We do our first ionization. So we do that first ionization. And after that, we have the configuration of neon. 3s1. If we, and we can look at what the energy is associated with each one of those. For sodium, that first ionization has a ionization energy of 496. For magnesium, it's 738. You can look up at our table above, and that's exactly what you see. 496, 738, and that's for that first ionization. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at removing the next electron. And when you look at doing that second ionization, since that sodium is currently that sodium plus, right here we have sodium plus is what you have after the first ionization energy. Here you have magnesium plus. Now that, that sodium plus is at the same electron configuration as neon, it has a noble gas configuration. And this next electron has to come from the 2p orbital which would give you this designation for the, um, the electron configuration of sodium 2 plus. But when you remove that electron from that noble gas configuration, the sodium was in a stable state. It had reached noble gas configuration, that most stable configuration. And now we're taking it away from that configuration. So not only are we moving away from that stable configuration, but initially, the Z effective felt by this electron right here, as we've calculated before, is 1. And that comes from taking the 11 protons that sodium has. You subtract the 10 interior core electrons. You get 1. This electron, this 2p6 electron, its Z effective is 11 minus the shielding only comes from 1s2 now. So 11 minus 2. That's plus 9. So this electron is held very tightly by the sodium plus. We've gone, you know, one energy level within. We're smaller, and the electron is held even tighter. So it's really hard to remove that electron. So you have this huge second ionization energy. When you look at magnesium, 
we do that second ionization, what we'll see is that we get the confirmation now, the noble gas of that noble gas of neon. And we went from, you know, this electron fills a Z effective of 12 minus 10, so plus 2. This noble gas, sorry, this electron right here has the same Z effective of plus 2. It is harder because, you know, we've shrunk the atom. We know that cations get smaller. So that now that single valence electron is closer to the nucleus, so it feels a little bit more of the positive pull. So it is harder to remove that second electron. What is true for every subsequent ionization is that it increases. So um, subsequent ionization energies are always larger than the previous. but have huge jumps when we remove electrons from noble gas configuration. So if we lose an electron that takes us away from that noble gas configuration, we see that huge jump. So for sodium, that happens when you remove the second electron. For magnesium, that happens when you remove the third electron, because that third ionization does basically the same thing as it did for sodium in the second. When we have that third ionization, that's when we go to that helium 2s2, 2p5. and you know, the, the 2p6 electron here that you're going to remove. So we go once again to that 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. This electron feels a z effective of 12 minus 2 of plus 10. And so once you surpass this noble gas configuration removal, the trend goes back to having sodium smaller than magnesium because the magnesium has that larger z effective. And then, you know, all part A is saying is it's just summarizing what I wrote below, that once you've reached noble gas configuration, it requires a lot of energy to remove the next core electron since it has that high Z effective. And you can look at a table of these ionization energies, and what you would see is that we have this little stair-step pattern that for sodium, its preferred state is sodium Na+. So when you go past that and you remove the second electron, which is, in this case, you're removing this is the removal of core electron, or the, the change from, let me make change be a little bit more legible, the change from noble gas configuration. Once you do that removal, you have that huge jump. So for sodium, it happens for the second ionization energy, magnesium for the third, aluminum for the fourth, silicon for the fifth, so on and so forth, as you remove from that noble gas configuration. Okay? And you can see that, you know, for argon, already starting in its noble gas configuration, it just starts relatively large. And as you go down this row, you can see that generally you have an increase because you're going across this. What's happening as we're going from element to element here is we're going across the periodic table left to right. So you have that increase from higher Z effective. And then you have the jumps when you exceed that noble gas configuration. And so um, this is just something to keep in mind when you're talking about periodic trends that Generally, ionization energy should increase from left to right and decrease going uh, from top to bottom. But when you're talking about this left to right behavior, if you talk about the second and third ionization energies, you might see points where one jumps because it's losing that noble gas uh, configuration. And the other just is there's an increase, but it's not as large because you're still moving towards the noble gas configuration. And so that's just something to keep in mind as you look through problems that deal with ionization energy. And so we'll talk a little bit more about this in class on Tuesday. 
to go back over this, but this should be like a good primer that will prepare you for the exam that we have on Thursday.